a couple of interesting uh, slides that we don't get to see very often. Now this, unfortunately, this slide is too big to even entirely fit um, on one view. But this is acral skin. You can see that thick corneal layer. And there's dermis, subcutis, and this is bone. And that's the bone marrow space, which is filled with fat and a little tiny bit of bone marrow. And this is actually an amputation specimen uh, from a, uh, I can't remember, I think this is from a toe. And the reason is because of this massive tumor here. This is a melanoma growing underneath the toenail. So this is a big, huge melanoma. That's not really the point of the video, but the point is just to show that this is what, what a toe looks like. You've got, um, you've got the acral skin, and underneath it you've got the uh, uh, dermis, you've got sweat glands down here, there are large dilated blood vessels. I think underneath here we can see some very nice glomus structures, glomus apparatus. So you can see this kind of tangled coil of vessels here. Each of those little center spaces is a lumen lined by endothelial cells. You even see some blood cells in there. And then those little perfectly round guys kind of organized around the outside. Those are those modified muscle cells, the pericytes, that um, help uh, kind of constrict these little vascular channels. So that's a glomus apparatus or a canal of Suke and Hoyer. Is uh, if you want to be fancy and impress your friends, you can tell them that. And then down here is bone. This is a cortical bone or lamellar bone, and you can see the, the lines uh, laid down here in organized fashion. And in these little central spaces, those are called lacunar spaces. And in there, you have osteocytes that have become entrapped. Um, um, as the, they started as osteoblasts, and then as they built the bone around themselves, they made um, a little tiny space where the osteocyte is entrapped inside. And so that's um, cortical bone. So this is the bone of the phalanx of the, of the great toe. And let's go around to the other side here. The other thing that's kind of interesting here is that you can see coming right off of the bone this dense pink layer, this is dense regular connective tissue. And again, I told you earlier that dense regular connective tissue is either fascia, tendon, or ligament. And here you can see that it's actually connecting, this big band of it right here is connecting broadly to the bone. So if that on the other side, which we can't see here, if it hooks up to a muscle, then this would be a tendon. If on the other side it hooks up to a bone, it would be a ligament. So ligament and tendon and fascia look very similar at high power and really it's kind of the context that you find them in that you can tell them apart. Um, so that's a nice example of a, probably of a tendon in this case that's hooking up to one of the muscles that allow you to contract or extend your fingers, to flex or extend your fingers. Oh, and another nice structure that we have here, this is an artery. And how we can tell it as an artery is that we got this nice thick, smooth muscle wall around the outside. And then look what's happening here right outside the lumen. There's the lumen. The lumen is lined by a layer of thin, flat endothelial cells. And then out here, let's see if we can get it to show up. We're gonna flip the condenser. See that squiggly line there that comes in and out of focus? That's called the internal elastic lamina. And it's this little band of, of squiggly elastic tissue that's right underneath the intima. So the intima is this inner layer, and then the media is this outer layer that's made of muscle. And then there's also a little tiny layer outside called the adventitia. But when you see a presence of that internal elastic lamina, that means it's a artery, actually, rather than a vein. So veins can have thick muscular walls just like arteries can, but finding that elastic lamina, that's a pretty good sign that you're dealing with an artery. So there's a nice example of a big artery. We don't see those um, in most skin biopsies, but when you have larger specimens like this, you can see them sometimes. So we've got artery, we've got some probably tendon, we've got nice bone uh, down here, and then we've also got a big melanoma arising under the nail. And I think somewhere I also saw over here, oh yeah, it's kind of fragmented but you can see part of that onion skin. So there it is again, a Pacinian corpuscle. It's kind of broken in this case artifactually during processing, but that's a Pacinian corpuscle. All right, I think I've got another, um, another amputated toe here for a melanoma. So fortunately these are rare melanomas on the, the toe, but they do happen. And uh, actually famous musician Bob Marley died from a uh, subungual melanoma of the great toe, unfortunately. So this is and that when, uh, when dark skin patients get melanoma, this is the kind of melanoma they tend to get. They don't usually get melanoma if you're black or brown skin, but if you do get a melanoma, it's usually gonna be under the toe or on, on the palms or soles. So the reason I'm showing this one is here, this is the top of the toe. 
And when we come out, this is what we call the nail fold going over the top of the nail. And this dense pink structure right here, this is nail, the nail plate. The nail plate is the part of your nail that you clip when you clip your nails. And where the nail plate grows from, deep down here, underneath that little area at the top of your nail, when you look down at it, this is called the nail matrix. So these are the dividing cells. They look more or less like keratinocytes. They are basically modified keratinocytes. And these cells are growing and giving rise to the nail plate. And the nail plate, just like your hair, is made of dead keratin. It's just a bunch of keratin um, stuck together. And you can see that the keratin develops into this nice plate. And that plate comes out and exits from underneath the fold and then goes along the top surface of the toe. And again, here, it's unfortunately underlined by this huge, massive uh, melanoma. All of this purple stuff down here. This whole huge thing, unfortunately, is melanoma, which is very bad. But this is a, that's a nice example, though, uh, aside from the melanoma, there, that's a nice example of the matrix and then the nail plate. And the uh, little layer of epithelium underneath the nail plate, we call that the nail bed epithelium. And again, it's not very normal here. It's kind of destroyed by the, by the melanoma underneath it. But, but it's a good idea to get from low power to see that this is what your, your nail fold up there, the nail plate, the matrix of the nail. And then out here is the, the, the tip of the toe with uh, lined by acryl skin. It's kind of torn up from processing. Unfortunately, to get the cuts of these, uh, these sections with bone in them, we have to soak them into a type of acid to dissolve the calcium. And that kind of uh, damages the quality of the histology and makes the, the tissue not look quite as good. But that, otherwise, we're not able to cut through the bone. So, and again, you've got your nice acryl skin here. And one other structure to show while we're on acryl skin. Let's see if we can find a good, a good one here. Oh, there it is. So right here on acryl skin, when the when the eccrine sweat duct, that's the eccrine duct, see a double cuboidal layer with a little lumen lined by a pink cuticle, it eventually comes up and empties into the surface. And when it does, you can see it kind of spirals. You get this, this is all one duct that's kind of spiraling. We're just cutting through part of the spiral. And it spirals up and out through the surface. And that's still the, the space there, even going through the corneal layer that allows the sweat to come out to the surface. So when you get sweaty feet or sweaty palms, this is how it's happening. And so this structure is called the acrosyringium. The acrosyringium is this little twirly um, outflow tract of the eccrine sweat ducts um, that you see most prominently on acryl skin. I mean, the eccrine ducts exit out the surface uh, elsewhere in the skin too, but you really notice this like kind of swirled uh, spiral-like pattern in um, the palms and the soles. And there's another one. So you can see the eccrine duct and you can see it's kind of kind of cut. There's another section of it and there it comes up to the top. So again, this all connects together. We're only just seeing one plane of section. So uh, these are three-dimensional structures. We're just cutting one slice through.